The Democratic Alliance, the DA, has filed the papers in the Gauteng High Court in Pretoria seeking a declaratory uh, order for government to effect an arrest against Russian President Vladimir Putin if he arrives in South Africa. Now, South Africa is scheduled to host the BRICS summit in August where Putin is expected to attend. However, the country, which is a signatory to the Rome Statute, has adopted a nonpartisan stance on the global conflict. Putin is wanted for alleged war crimes in Ukraine by the International Criminal Court, the ICC. Meanwhile, Durko has requested diplomatic immunities and privileges for the upcoming BRICS summit and the ministerial leg a standard confirmant for all international gatherings in South Africa. However, Durko's spokesperson, Clayson Munyela, has clarified that these immunities do not override any warrant that may have been issued by any international international tribunal against any attendance of the conference. All right, now let's uh, discuss this further. We are now joined via Zoom by Henny Stradum, Professor of International Law in, at the University of Johannesburg. Prof, thank you so much uh, for your time this afternoon. So the DA says it doesn't want a repeat of essentially the al-Bashir saga, and that's why it's going this particular route. What are their chances, Prof, and, and how will this you know, impact relations with Russia for South Africa, if any? Yeah, it's almost a repeat of the al-Bashir saga because at that point in time there was also a court application to prevent him from leaving and to uh, place an obligation on the South African government to arrest and surrender him to the court. I think currently what we are facing here is a declaratory order and I think that will indeed be an interesting way uh, for the simple reason that we need clarity on, on what the issue is. And normally parties will apply for the declarative order uh, in cases where there's uncertainty as to the legal position. And this is exactly what we have in the, at this point in time. We must not forget that the Supreme Court of Appeal in the Al-Bashir saga has already decided that South Africa has the obligation uh, under its own implementation act uh, to arrest and surrender at the time Al-Bashir to the International uh, Criminal Court. And that act still stands. Uh, so its obligation that it places on on on, on the South African government uh, is still valid and still uh, in place. And I think that is one of the the points that will probably be taken. But I have to also mention that there is uh, some uncertainty as to the immunity issue in interna general international law. And I think that is probably the reason why this approach has now been followed in order to get a, uh, an order from a court, a declarative order, on what the legal position is in the case of, of uh, uh, President Putin visiting uh, South Africa for the BRICS summit. Mm. We understand, though, that these uh, immunities uh, are, are not something new, um, you know, for South Africa. I mean, uh, Durko's spokesperson, uh, Clayson Munyele, you know, clarifying the, you know, that um, this request of diplomatic immunities and privileges, you know, for the upcoming uh, BRICS summit and the ministerial leg is a standard conferment for all international gatherings in South Africa. Perhaps it is a, a, a case of timing then, Prof, because of what is happening in as far as, uh, you know, the relationship between South Africa and Russia that isn't quite as clear as I, as I think South Africa would have hoped by now. Yeah, indeed. I, I think that is normal practice uh, for states to, to uh, you know, assign uh, diplomatic immunity to heads of state and government in cases of that kind. Uh, but that, as the government, I think, has admitted, uh, does not override the arrest warrant for President Putin. And I don't think that South Africa can, by way of its intending to, uh, in this way, uh, try to circumvent its obligations under the Rome Statute, and especially in terms of its own Implementation Act. Uh, Prof, you know, it seems that South Africa, you know, has explained just its neutral stance, its no partisan stance on the Russia-Ukraine conflict, but it still does remain or not land the way in which um, the country would have hoped, because as you say, it is a signatory to the Rome uh, Statute. Uh, so what should South Africa's stance be now, uh, given the ambiguity around its relationship with yeah. Russia now? 
Yeah, neutrality is a totally separate issue. It's got nothing to do with the, with the country's obligations in terms of a multilateral treaty. It cannot use a neutrality not to comply with its obligations mm. uh, in this instance. And secondly, and, and that's really my, my strong view in this regard, uh, neutrality doesn't mean that you, you sort of become indifferent when serious international crimes are committed. You still have the obligation to denounce that and to act upon on it and to, 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 to tell the world where do you stand concerning those crimes. So neutrality in international law does not prevent you from making an announcement and denouncing crimes of that kind, uh, of that, uh, of that uh, you know, notion. Uh, and I think that uh, South Africa should not sort of, you know, confuse the neutrality issue or anybody uh, for that matter with its obligations under the Rome Statute mm. and to take a stance when we deal with crimes of this kind. Mm. You know, Prof, while, while all of this is happening, at the end of the day, the BRICS summit is taking place in August. South Africa is then meant to host, um, you know, the, the summit. Putin has accepted an invite. Uh, what do you think? How do you think this will all play out? Yeah, initially, and I'm on record um, uh, stating that uh, publicly that I do not think that President Putin will come to South Africa. And in the meantime, especially with regard to the latest developments, I think uh, the chances are, are extremely good that he will, will come to South Africa for the BRICS summit. And I think it's in view of that event that we really need clarity on what South Africa's legal position is with regard to the immunity issue concerning uh, President Putin. So that we can, I mean, we're talking about the rule of law here. Uh, and we need clarity on what the rule of law is in, in, in matters of this kind. Uh, and I think it's also in the interest of the South African government uh, to have that, that guidance by the court and, and everybody else who is interested in this issue and who have very strong views about South Africa's obligations under the Rome Statute and its own legislation. Uh, and also in terms of the seriousness of the offenses that we're talking about here. Professor Stradom, uh, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming through to the show and giving us your analysis on that. Professor Henny Stradom is a professor of international law at the University of Johannesburg.